we're going to focus on verses three through six, but I want to read from verse number one. All right, we're gonna focus on verses three through six. I wanna read from verse number one. The festival of unleavened bread, which is called Passover was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put him, that's Jesus, to death because they were afraid of the people. Verse three, then Satan entered Judas called Iscariot, who was numbered among the 12. He went away and discussed with the chief priests and temple police how, key, how he could hand him over, him being Jesus, over to them. They were glad and agreed to give him silver. So he accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him to them when the crowd was not present. Then Satan entered Judas called Iscariot who was numbered among the 12. He went away and discussed with the chief priests and the temple police how he, how he could hand him over to them. They were glad and agreed to give him silver. So he accepted the offer, started looking for a good opportunity to betray him to them when the crowd was not present. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your word. It is holy we are dust but you promised that the holy spirit would speak to us that which he has received of you and so lord i pray that as we engage your word that you would by the power person and presence of the holy spirit today speak to our hearts open our understandings father give us give us new eyes to see that, that, that the Judases in our lives were necessary, necessary to push us towards our destiny. God, thank you for this word. Thank you for the fruit that shall come in our lives because of it in Jesus name we pray, amen. Listen, I want to talk, I want to talk to us just for a few moments from the thought I needed Judas. Mm. I needed Judas. It's an unusual thing. It is. It is quite an unusual thing to find oneself saying, thank you in the middle of life's challenges. Humanly, 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 we, we don't usually find ourselves <laughs> saying thank you while we're going through. Or if we say thank you while we're going through, we usually don't say thank you for what, there we go, that's better said, for what we are going through. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, many times, many times we do our best, we do our best to deflect or to redirect in a way that helps us to try to find uh, the proverbial silver lining behind every dark cloud. But I want to suggest to us today, I want to, I want to suggest to us today because of a verse uh, that, that shows up in the book of Psalms, in Psalm 119 at verse 71, there is a verse that says, it was good <laughs> that I had been afflicted. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, not, 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 not many times will we find ourselves having that testimony while we are experiencing the challenge, while we are experiencing the pain, while we are enduring the suffering. It's, it's not common for us to say while we're going through, thank you for what I'm, I'm going through. But, but I want to suggest in this Lenten season, as we approach the celebration of the day in which the Lord Jesus was resurrected to new life, as we approach the celebration of that, I, I want to remind us in this season that, that each of us, each of us has had, are having, or will have some Judas experiences. Yeah, whether that's whether that's a person, whether that is a group of people, whether, whether that is a situation, we're going to have situations arise in our lives that, that betray us. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We, we gonna have, we gonna have some moments in our lives when it seems like everything is going well and out of nowhere, we get blindsided by something that was unexpected, blindsided by somebody who was close to us, but they did us in, all of us will have <clears throat> excuse me, a Judas experience. But I want to tell you something. The fact of the matter is, is that, is that you needed Judas. <laughs> I know that's a, I know that's a different approach for, for some of us on today. I know, I know that we live by the creed and we know that all things work together for good i know we live by the creed that no weapon formed against us shall prosper i know that we live by the creed that that i am the head and not the tail i am above only and not <coughs> excuse me not beneath i know that we live by that creed but the fact of the matter is ah uh, that listen listen i want you to get this that no seed grows without agitated soil <laughs> yeah did you hear what i said no seed grows without agitated soil you you needed that adversity you needed that challenge you needed that time you needed that storm that arose in your life you needed those negative influences that happened you needed that because you would never have become what you are today if you hadn't gone through that yesterday can i get some help here yeah 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 you you need it you needed judas listen you you know you know you know you know the biblical you know the biblical narrative very well we 
we are approaching the time, <clears throat> excuse me, we are approaching the time. That's about the fifth time I call. Uh, I need my wife to send me some water down here. Uh, where the ushers, where the, where the ushers? Get, send the usher down here with some water. Send the usher. <laughs> Uh, we're approaching, we are approaching, can we have a little fun? We are approaching, we are approaching that time, that historical time when, when all of Jerusalem is preparing to celebrate the Passover. You know, the Passover is that time uh, that Israel remembers and commemorates what God did for them uh, early in their history when they were in captivity in Babylon. Thank you, Sister Didi. I know that. I know. I know those ushers would have been there. Y'all would have been on point. I know that. I know that. Uh, Passover commemorates that time in Israel's history when God delivered them from captivity and the Passover event, thank you, sir, was commemorated throughout the life of Israel's history. We're approaching the Passover, the time when the Passover lamb must, must be killed and through great symbolism, Jesus himself would become our Passover. But before, before that could happen, uh, Jesus needed, <laughs> he needed Judas. Yeah, yeah. Before, before he would uh, carry the cross up the Via Della Rosa, he needed Judas. Before, before he received those spikes in his wrists and those spikes in his feet, he, he needed Judas. Before Peter would deny him three times, he needed Judas. And so here, here in, in our text in Luke chapter 22, in our text, the Bible says that they are approaching this feast of unleavened bread or, or Passover. And the chief priests were looking for a way uh, to put Jesus to death. They were tired of him. They they had grown uh, sick of him. He was gaining too much fame among the people and they needed and wanted rather to get rid of him. And they were looking for a way to put him to death. But they wanted to do it in a backhanded kind of way because the Bible says they were afraid of the people. And while this is not a preaching point, I want you to write this down. Judas is always afraid. <laughs> ah, he is always, Judas is always afraid of the people. That's why Judas works in dark spaces. That's why Judas works in clandestine ways. That's why Judas works behind the scenes. That's why Judas never wants to be found out because he is afraid of the people. Again, that's not a preaching point, but I just want to share that with you. You need to understand that about your Judas. Your Judas never wants to come out in the open. And so the Bible says, uh, that Satan entered Judas. Satan entered Judas. And that's just two points today, just two points today. And the first point is this, Judas reminds me that there will be defectors in my life. 
there will be defectors in my life. I, listen, I don't want you to ever forget the fact that everybody that is with you ain't for you. Lord have mercy. Can I, can I say that again? Everybody that is with you is not for you. I, listen, this is a hard lesson to learn. I wish I had learned this lesson a little earlier in my life. I Listen, I don't share this so that you can spend your life being guarded against people, but you need to understand that everybody that is with you is, oh God, it's everybody that's with you ain't for you. Sometimes you will encounter people that will be close to you because the text says in verse number three that Judas called his chariot was numbered among the 12, which means this, that he was close to Jesus and he was close to the people who were close to Jesus. And I need us to understand that sometimes in our lives, we will have people who are close to us and they look like they are close to Jesus, but they are really the furthest thing away from us because why? Because Satan has entered their hearts. Preach, Pope. <clears throat> you need to stop living by this idea that if it looks like a duck and it acts like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it's a duck. I want to tell you something, that Judas was among people. Watch this. Watch this. He was among people and he looked like them and he talked like them and he shared with them, but he was not like them. Oh, God. Judas was a defector. He was an imposter. He was a charlatan. He, he was a fake. He was a phony. Oh, God. And some of you are going to disagree with this. Woo. But sometimes... You need them phony folk around. <laughs> Do you listen? You go back and you look in scripture. Go back and look in scripture. Jesus never put Judas out of the group. And Jesus knew who he was. But Jesus did not expel him. And he did not put him out. He let Judas hang right in there with him. I know you're saying, well, Reverend, I ain't Jesus. You're right. <laughs> you're not Jesus. And you don't know the intentions of the folk who are around you. But I want to tell you this, that because they run in your circle, God has purpose for them with their phony selves. Help me. <laughs> huh? Yes, God has even purpose for the phony folk who are in your life. He was controlled by Satan. He was controlled. He was controlled by Satan. Not only was he controlled by Satan, he colluded with the enemy. He colluded with the enemy. Verse 4 says he went away and discussed with the chief priests and the temple police how he could hand him over to them. Verse 5, they were glad and agreed to give him silver. Verse 6, so he accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him to them when the crowd was not present. He was controlled by Satan and he colluded with the enemy. Do you realize, I need you to understand that the folk who are running with you, that listen, they might be with you, but if they are not for you, that means that they are going back behind the scenes and working against you. Help me. 
Now, can I just say this right here? That because he colluded with the enemy, I need you to understand. When your enemy colludes with, with your enemy, get this, there's nothing that you can do to control what they're doing. You don't have no power over that. But I also want to tell you that God has the ability ah, to make that turn for your good. Remember Joseph? Oh, God. Remember that coat that his daddy gave him? Remember that dream that he shared with his brothers and they colluded against him? Let's throw him in a pit. Well, one well, a couple of brothers said, well, let's kill him. <laughs> oh, God. And thank God for Judah because Judah spoke up. Oh, yeah, you ought to be happy about that when praise speaks on your behalf. Oh, God, Mr. Pearl, we ought to be shouting off of that right there. You ought to be excited when praise speaks on your behalf. Judah said, listen, no, nah, don't kill him. Put him in a pit. Kill an animal and put the blood on the coat and take it back to daddy and tell daddy that some wild animal got him. And they colluded and they conspired against Joseph. But even in their colluding and their conspiring, I want you to get this right here. This is the place to shout right here. Even in their colluding and their conspiring, they were pushing Joseph toward his destiny. And that's what, oh God, that's what defectors will do. That's why you need Judas, because Judas, although he is a defector, Judas, God will use Judas to push you toward your destiny. Yeah. 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 I needed Judas. I needed Judas because Judas push me toward my destiny. Now, I want you to understand this. Just because God used Judas to push me toward my destiny, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be without pain. It doesn't mean that I won't have to go to a cross and be nailed in the hands and nailed in the feet and pierced in the side and crown of thorns placed on head and be beaten and mocked and spit on. I know that's not the experience that you want, but I need you to understand something, that as Judas betrays Jesus and it pushes him toward that painful experience, Jesus goes through that painful experience to remind us that on the other side of that pain, there is a resurrection. Oh, somebody ought to shout amen right there. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. After all that Jesus had to go through because of what Judas did, get this, there is no resurrection without Judas' betrayal. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need somebody to know today. that without your experience, whatever that painful experience was for you, the loss of that loved one, the death of that child, the loss of a relationship, the losing of a job, whatever that painful experience was for you, that health crisis that you had to endure, whatever that painful experience was that showed up in your life in a season where you thought that everything was going well, in a season where you thought that everything was going right, and out of nowhere, here comes a Judas experience. Without that, you would never make it ah, to your get up moment. <clears throat> Are y'all with me here? I needed Judas because without Judas, I don't get to the resurrection. 
I needed Judas because without that experience, I don't understand uh, exactly who God is in my own life. And without Judas, I don't learn God. Woo. So I need him. I needed Judas. I hear somebody say, I'm finished. I hear somebody say, Reverend, but what if it wasn't Judas? Okay, well, perhaps his name was going to be Sam or, <laughs> or Joe or Jacob or or Sally, whomever it was, whomever it was, it was a part, ah, you need to get this. It was a part of God's plan for that Judas experience to happen. It was a part of God's plan. He designed it that way. So stop asking God, why did I have to have that experience? It was a part of his plan. Why did you take that one? It was a part of his plan. Why did they have to die so young? It was a part of his plan. Now I know that that doesn't take away the sting of the pain of loss, but it should help you to reconcile the fact that even in this, God knows what he's doing. Why now? Why this season? Why in this moment? Because God knows what he is doing. Let me read this verse to you. I'm finished. Let me read this verse to you out of Psalm 119. This verse out of Psalm 119, I'm finished. <clears throat> Psalm 119, verse 71 says, it was good for me to be afflicted so that I could learn your statutes. Some of us would never turn to the word of God had it not been for the Judas experience in our lives. Some of us would never have fallen on our face and cried out to God had it not been for the Judas experience in our lives. Some of us would still be trying to make it on our own merits had it not been for that Judas experience in our lives. But that Judas experience was a part of God's plan. And in order to push us toward our destiny, he had to use Judas uh, to move us. I know that that message doesn't sound like it has a lot of hope in it. Somebody needs to understand that God is at work in every instant of our lives. Taking the good things of our lives taking the, the negative things of our lives and shaping them and moving them so that it will work out 
for our good and his glory. For our good and his glory. So I want to tell somebody today, hey, listen, man, you you needed Judas. Because Judas was pushing you towards your towards your destiny. Listen, God created you, my friend, with a purpose, for a purpose, on purpose. And sometimes in order for us to know and experience that purpose, he has to move us out of our comfortability and move us out of our complacency, move us away from what is familiar so that we like Abraham can learn how to journey in a land that God has already given us. <laughs> promise of God's word is that we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And so embrace the fact that you've had that Judas experience and thank God that he uses it or has used it to push you toward your destiny. I dare you to look back over your life. Look at those instances and look at those circumstances that rose up in your life that challenged you Ah, in spaces where you felt like everything was going right. And really what it did was it made you uncomfortable enough to move to another level in Christ. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for using those experiences, those negative experiences of our lives to cause us to flourish and to grow. And help us, God, to, to be more cognizant of the times when you're moving us in this way so that we'll rightly give you the glory. Thank you for your word. We love you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you give God some praise for his word today? I needed Judas. Wow. Don't forget to join us Wednesday night for Bible study. We're going to talk a little bit about Passover. All right. And so we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night for Bible study. And then on Thursday, we'll be together again virtually uh, with City of Hope Church for their one night Lenten revival. As we look forward to sharing with you, make sure that you log in on Facebook to the City of Hope Facebook page on Thursday. I'll make sure and post that on our St. Luke website. Uh, I'm sorry, St. Luke Facebook page. I'll put that information there uh, so that you can meet us on Thursday for worship. And then on Saturday at three o'clock, we'll be sharing with, uh, with the uh, St. Paul AME Church in Winchester, Virginia, three o'clock for their ushers anniversary. All right. God bless you this Lord's Day. Remember, Ephesians 2 and 10 says you were God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared in advance for you to do. And I'll say it again. You are created with a purpose for a purpose on purpose. And we want you in this year of 2021 to go and live in purpose. God bless you this Lord's day. I commend you to him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or imagine according to the power that is at work in you. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, world without end. Amen. God bless you.
this Lord's day. And he hears your prayers. He knows all about your problems. Father, we just thank you for this day.